friends, thanks for joining me again today. What we're talking about today is home or direct to consumer HPV testing. What is it? Is it real? Is it reliable? And is it right for me? So if that's what you're looking for, hit like on this video and stick around because we're going to talk about it right after this intro. Thanks for joining us today, guys. If you're new here, my name is Danielle Jones. I am an OBGYN physician and mom to four. I post videos about women's health topics, being an OBGYN, being a doctor mom, medical school, women's health, mom stuff, pregnancy stuff, all kinds of things that are relevant to women and mothers and pre-meds and med students and anything in between. So if that's what you're looking for, hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate the support and we're gonna jump into today's topic home HPV testing. What is it? Okay, so first off, we have to cover what are direct-to-consumer tests. Direct-to-consumer tests are tests which, rather than going to your doctor's office and having a lab test run, they send to your house where you collect some sort of sample and you mail it back to them. The most well-known form of this is things like 23andMe, um, the genetic testing, the ancestry screening, things like that. And I'm not going to talk about those today because that's really kind of outside my field of practice other than a couple of small subsets of those. But I do want to talk about what I saw on social media this past week, which was an advertisement for home HPV testing. If you don't know, HPV is human papilloma virus. This is a virus which is a sexually transmitted virus, but it's a little bit different than things like gonorrhea and chlamydia. It's, it's a virus which 80% of women, all women, women who are sexually active even with one partner will be exposed to HPV over the course of their life. 80%, that's a very high number. And some experts in this area actually think it may be even higher than that. It very commonly just goes away on its own. It comes, you may not ever know you have it, you may never have a symptom, you may never have any problems from it, and it just goes away, your body's immune system clears it on its own. The problem with HPV is we can't reliably predict who will clear the virus and who won't. And if you don't clear the virus, there's a chance that it can live in the cells of the cervix and cause abnormal pap smears. Abnormal pap smears, if ignored for long periods of time, can eventually lead to cervical cancer. And so that's why HPV matters. There is a vaccine that helps protect against HPV, but even getting the vaccine doesn't mean that you don't need pap smears in the future. So what's the deal with the home HPV testing? <clears throat> what this is, is a kit that they send to you to your house where you can get a sample, and I believe it's a vaginal sample, just like with a Q-tip, easy to collect, and send it back to them, and they will say, you're positive or negative for these strains of HPV. So that sounds like a good thing, right? You find out you have HPV, and then you go to their doctor, and you talk to them about it. Why may this not be a good thing? Let's just back up a little bit and talk about what these IVDs, or in vitro diagnostic tests, actually are. So what these are, are tests which traditionally your doctor would order. When your doctor orders labs, they should be ordering them with an idea of what they're going to do with the results if they come back positive. In my opinion, this is something that actually medicine should improve on because I often see people, and occasionally even myself, ordering tests that if they come back abnormal, I'm like, how has this changed my management? What do I do now? And that really shouldn't be what we do. We should go, okay, I have this person, here's what they have going on, or here's who they are, or what their story is. And I'm gonna order this test because if it were this result, we would do this. And if it were this result, we would do this. So that means it needs to change what you're doing. Otherwise it's a cost and a piece of information which you really don't need. So why would HPV not change what we're doing? Well, a positive HPV test is information which we just talked about might eventually go away. So we need to only order HPV testing in a particular population of patients. And the current recommendation for that is women who are over the age of 30 and not to do it all the time, only every few years 
depending on the result of their pap smear. And that's an important caveat there. The pap smear needs to be done with this. There may be a time in the future where we only need to do the HPV test, but we're not there yet. And even if we were there, I don't think it would be something that should be done in your house because you need us to help you decide what to do with the results because there are a bunch of different types of HPV and what we do with them depends on what your pap smear says as well. Now, why do we not wanna order this test in women who are younger than 30? Which is my main concern with this whole direct consumer HPV testing to begin with. Look at it like this. It's like why we don't do mammograms until you're 40 because the risk of breast cancer is very low younger than that. And we all know there are women who get breast cancer younger than age 40, but how many people under the age of 40 would have some finding on their mammogram which prompted biopsies, anxiety, fear, worry, procedures, and some even surgery to catch one breast cancer less than that. It's a lot. And someone did a bunch of scientific analysis to figure out that age 40 or 50, depending on the guidelines that you look at, would be the point where this becomes a reasonable risk for a patient. So it's kind of the same thing. Of course people get cervical cancer under the age of 30. It's extraordinarily rare. But what's extraordinarily common is a positive HPV test under the age of 30. So we should wait until we've given the maximum amount of time for that to go away on its own or to manifest itself as an abnormal pap smear. You know, you're not ignoring your cervical health before that. You are still getting pap smears. And my concern is that if someone does an HPV test and it's positive or negative, that they won't come in and get their pap smear with it. So the flip side of that is someone does a home test and it's HPV negative. Okay, great. Now they don't come in and get a pap smear for three, four, five, six years, and they're 28, and they come in and we find out that they have severe dysplasia, an abnormality of the cervix, which if we caught it much earlier, could potentially have been treated without surgery or without a procedure. So there's just a lot of things I think that these companies aren't forthcoming with. I mean, let's just, let's just do a Google search and see how many results we can find for these home HPV tests. I don't think it's going to be small. Home HPV test, okay. So first off, I'm getting a large number of results which are advertisements. So that means that someone paid Google to promote these results at the top of the Google search engine. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, at least six different brands. And I haven't even scrolled down underneath the first few results in the ads. Six brands of home HPV testing. So why do they exist? These tests are very well studied to be very beneficial in places where women cannot access care. Meaning they are sent to women in very rural areas of third world countries where they cannot come in to get a pap smear done. And I do understand there are women who don't have access to care in the United States as well. And maybe they will be a player in that field eventually. But these tests right now are not being targeted to them and not being used for good. They're being targeted to people who have the money, who have access to social media, and who are vulnerable because they're telling them, this is how you protect your health. And it's not, that's a lie, this is not true. So there are studies on these tests that say if you send them to women who live in third world countries where they can't access gynecologic care, that they can come back positive and then that will prompt these women to get plugged in to a care access program. And that helps them, I guess, triage who is the most important person to be in this care access program. That's a great use of these tests. And that's where these companies should be focusing, but they're not. They're trying to take your money. They are profiting off of your worries, your insecurities, your concerns, and you should be talking about those things with me or your own doctor, not taking these tests and giving money to these people and then not knowing what to do. So why does it matter? Why does it matter if you're 25 and we test you for HPV and it comes back positive? So what? Now we have a result and what do we do? If it were me and I did that test at home, I'd go, oh my goodness, 
this has to mean that I'm going to get some terrible pap smear abnormality or cervical cancer. And I would go to my OBGYN's office. And then what does she tell me? Well, for me, I would say, you know what? This test really shouldn't have been done in the first place. And now I'm not sure what to do with it. I guess we can manage it like we would if you were over the age of 30. But I don't really feel comfortable just ignoring it at that point because we know it's there. And I don't really feel comfortable doing the recommendations for women over 30. 80% of women are exposed to it at some point. So the rates of testing positive in the 21 to 30 age range is very high. So there's a really good chance this will come back positive and then we have to decide what to do with it. Well, abnormal pap smears and HPV tests, which are positive for particular types of HPV, are treated or not really treated, are worked up with a process called colposcopy. Colposcopy itself is not a terrible procedure. We basically do a pelvic exam, look at the cervix with a microscope, and if necessary, take biopsies of the cervix. But what happens if we find an abnormal biopsy? Well, just a biopsy, I mean, some stress, some anxiety, an extra exam, an extra cost to go to the doctor, extra cost for the procedure. I mean, those are real, real cons to doing this but the biggest cons is that some of those biopsies we take are going to be positive and we're going to have to do a procedure on the cervix to remove the abnormal cells well that puts people at risk for other things in the future including pregnancy loss infertility continuing to need procedures because it didn't get rid of everything but like i said almost all of these would resolve on their own before the woman was the age of 30 and if they didn't almost none of them would be cervical cancer at that point. So that's why it's very well studied to do the test starting at age 30 in conjunction with a pap smear. There are a few specific people who might get the test done under the age of 30, and those are outlined very well in guidelines from the American Society of Cervical Cancer Prevention, or ASCCP, and that's who we follow guidelines from for when to do pap smears and why. So my concern is that what's going to happen is we're going to get a large number of women who are doing this out of fear in the younger age groups. And they're going to pay for the test and do it before they even come in and chat with me about it. And we're going to have an abnormal result that we don't know what to do with. And then this just starts this process of needing to intervene, which becomes a bigger process of causing harm. When we know about it and we jump down the rabbit hole of trying to fix it, we cause more harm than we are causing good. And that's kind of my feelings on it. They're still advertising this like it's a blanket statement that everyone needs to do this. And it would be very easy for them in all of their advertisements to say, if you're over the age of 30, here's the HPV test. I still don't think it's good for women to do that at home without talking to their doctor but it's not as jarring to me because at least when they come in with a positive test, I know what to do with it. So my plea to these people who are advertising this is that every single advertisement you post needs to make it very clear that under the age of 30, there is nobody who needs an HPV test without their doctor talking to them about it and telling them why they need it first. That's it guys. I don't think doing HPV testing at home is a good thing. I feel a little differently about home access to contraceptives and to STD testing in general, things like gonorrhea and chlamydia, but that's another subject for another day. Thank you for tuning in. I hope this has been helpful. If you have questions or a comment or a topic you would like to cover in the future, please post it below. If you are interested in subscribing, please hit that subscribe button. It makes me so very, very happy. And like this video if it gave you good information. Outro music! Survive.